Welcome everyone to the April 17th, 2023 Board of Education regular business meeting. I have a motion to open the regular business meeting. Teresa and a second from Xavier. All in favor? Approve. It is upon recommendation from the superintendent of schools that the Board of Education enter into executive session to discuss the status of the open assistant superintendent position as well as potential terms and conditions. A motion from Teresa and a second from Xavier. All in favor? Thank you. We'll be back at 730. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone, to the April 17th, 2023 regular Board of Education meeting. I have a motion to adjourn the executive session and return to the public session. A motion from Teresa and a second from Xavier. This is becoming a habit. Yeah. <laughs> All in favor? Thank you. You stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, sorry about that. It is upon recommendation from the superintendent of schools that the Board of Education approve minutes from the meeting of the Huntington Union Free School District Board of Education dated April 10th, 2023. A motion from Michelle and a second from Tom. Any questions on the minutes? All in favor? That's everyone. We have FYI on the budget transfers. Any questions or comments on that? It is upon recommendation from the superintendent of schools that the Board of Education approve the attached warrants, which were certified for payment on April 12th, 2023. A motion from Xavier and a second from Kelly. All in favor? That's everyone. That brings us to a board member of communications and announcements. We just, do we just hear, we can guess there shouldn't be too many, but Michelle. I have one. Mm -hmm. I want to congratulate the inaugural Blue Devil Girls golf team on their first win last week against West Babylon. Super proud. I have a quick one. I just wanted to yeah. congratulate Woodhull on their career day. It was a huge success, and I think it's really great um, that we talk about careers at a young age. There were some really great um, careers represented from firemen, policemen, um, a hairdresser, uh, really cool ones, music producers. It was really great. The kids had a great time, and um, it was just great to see how excited they were. It was nice. Thanks for volunteering your time. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm going to add one. Uh, Saturday, we're holding a spring cleanup. It's our 13th annual spring cleanup. It's at 13 New York Avenue uh, here in the station. We go from 2 to 4. Uh, if you need to make up some community service hours, we'll sign off on your community service hours. Everyone's welcome to come. It's a great event. It's the 13th one. Would have been 14 if it hadn't been for COVID. <laughs> Just uh, one, uh, one reminder, uh, this Thursday, April 27th, Parents' Night Out at the American Legion Hall for the proceeds going to the Flower Hill PTA uh, <laughs> featuring local band Anarchy on the Bay. I'll remind everybody about the upcoming SEPTA fundraisers on Sight and Sounds. So there's still time to get your tickets. It's one of the best events of the year. Definitely um, reach out to them. There's a, like a electronic invitation that you can just click on. Anybody else? 
Thank you. I don't have much this evening. It is uh, obviously the middle of April. We are done with spring recess, and we are approaching the fourth quarter of the 22-23 school year. I ask that we slow it down a bit because this is uh, it's it's going to be an interesting two months for me personally. But I'm I'm looking forward to a great end of the year. It's it's been a, a phenomenal year, and, and this is a special night because we have so many students and their their parents and families here tonight, parents, guardians, families, siblings, etc., to to honor some of the uh, beautiful children that we have in Huntington for so many fantastic accomplishments. And this is the time of year where those end of year celebrations begin, and we're all looking forward to them. Um, one other thing, just to, to reiterate, uh, I know the, the board is aware of the fact that they have given me the authority to bring us into a class action lawsuit against Jewel Labs Incorporated for some of the damages done to children across the country, really. There are numerous districts from Maine to the south east, uh, southwest corner of California that have participated in some of these suits, and we are going to, to gain something from this, actually. We've just submitted all the final paperwork that will result in uh, some monies coming to the district as damages for some of the dangerous activities that children have engaged in because of the poor marketing tactics of a company that has really not done the right thing for adults or children, but specifically for young people. So I thank you for allowing us to participate in that, and it will end up being a lucrative outcome. Mm -hmm. Excellent. All right, that brings us to our first public commentary. I'll remind everyone, or inform you for the first time, if this is your first board meeting, that uh, public commentary is open to all of our residents and our staff and faculty. Uh, you have three minutes to speak when you come up. Please identify yourself and your affiliation with the school district. There's a form to fill out, just with your name and address and some basic information. You may speak on any subject. We ask that the first subjects be on those items for discussion and action. And then with time remaining, we usually allot 30 minutes um, for any other topics other than personnel matters or matters that involved naming any particular students. So at this time, I'd invite anyone up that wishes to speak. There is another opportunity at the end of the meeting to speak. But if you'd like to speak now, please just come right up to the podium. Seeing nobody coming to the podium, we'll move on to our items for discussion and action. The first one being our student recognition. I want to welcome all the parents and students that are here with us tonight. It's very exciting, and um, we can't wait to hear about all your accomplishments. So I will begin this evening where there's no particular order here, but we're going to start with, I'm going to invite Mr. Levy up to the lectern so he can introduce our National History Day program and help us honor some of the fantastic student representatives of that program. Thank you, Mr. Levy. OK, so um, Huntington students once again did a great job uh, representing our district on Sunday, March 26th at Hofstra University at the uh, regional competition for History Day. In fact, several students from Huntington High School and Finley were featured on the News 12 segment that they ran that Sunday evening, highlighting the contest. So that was kind of a special thing. Uh, that Tuesday afternoon, the virtual awards presentation was posted, and we had three projects placed and one project receive a special award. We will be sending two projects to states, and states will take place at the end of April. We're very proud of all of our students as they competed against almost 600 students and over 350 projects from across Long Island. And here are our winners. I hope everyone's here tonight. So if I could ask um, Ruby Hoffman to come up, if Ruby is here. That's great. <laughs> Ruby had a senior individual exhibit uh, called Stephen Biko, A Frontier in South Africa, and she won uh, second place in senior individual exhibit. Congratulations. <laughs> Our second uh, recognition tonight is a group 
and uh, these students uh, came in second place in senior group website. And if uh, you're here, I'd like to call up Janelle Maraquin, Andrea Manimunos, and Damaris Manimunos. The project was uh, Que Viva Mexico, Chicano Movement, and that was a website, senior group website. These young ladies will be going up to the state competition. As, as will Ruby. Ruby's going to go up to the states as well. Okay, um, the next group uh, I'd like to uh, call up is uh, Hillel and uh, Shana Linker, if you're here, well, come on up. This duo won third place in um, a senior group website. So congratulations. Their project was uh, on a topic very special to me, um, Taiwan, China's island frontier. And the last group to be recognized um, did not place, but they received a special award. Uh, is Jessica Bree and Haleen Torres here? Okay, I'll just recognize their, um, their topic. They won outstanding entry on aviation or military history sponsored by the Cradle of Aviation, and their group website was quite interesting. It was on dogs in warfare, combating frontiers and forwarding history. So it was quite an interesting topic. So those are our winners. Okay, next I'd like to welcome Principal Brendan Cusack up to the lectern so he can introduce the Suffolk County champion, two years running, Blue Devil Mock Trial Team. Oh, yes. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. It does give me great pleasure to introduce a number of our outstanding students this evening. And I'd like to thank the Board of Education, Mr. Polanski, and the members of Central Administration for giving us all the opportunity to have our students recognized here this evening. The first group of students that I'll be uh, highlighting tonight is our unbelievably phenomenal Huntington mock trial team. As you know, they are back-to-back -back Suffolk County champions. They're currently undefeated, and they are working hard to cap off their season as state champs in May. I've had the pleasure of seeing them perform in court at the county finals, and these young people are truly a sight to behold. When you watch them in action, it is perfectly clear that they put in literally hundreds of hours in preparation, along with their legal advisor, Mr. Palacios, and their advisors, Ms. Biaggi and Mr. Outson, who couldn't be here tonight, this evening, because they're actually in Manhattan preparing uh, for the big trade show and competition with our virtual enterprise uh, firms. So they send their well wishes as well. Um, and they'll be at the Javits Center this week. 
So I want to thank the members of the team, all of you, for your hard work, um, and Mr. Palacios for your guidance and incredible dedication to the team. This group certainly represents Huntington in the best way possible, and we simply couldn't be more proud of them. The members of our mock trial team are, and if you could come up and get your certificates and take a photo, Isabella Correccia Johnson. <laughs> Lindsay DePine. <laughs> Avid J.B. Balberzen Simro. <laughs> Nina Fasilla. <laughs> William Fallon. Andrew Ganley. <laughs> Vincenza Garofalo. <laughs> Aaron Hanlon. <laughs> Angie Hernandez Ramos. <laughs> Elizabeth James. Hillel Linker. <laughs> Natalie Parrott. <laughs> and Dowan Perval. <laughs> you guys are just awesome. Really, really awesome. awesome. So congratulations and good luck at the States. Like oh, yeah, absolutely. Come on up. I mean, there's a microphone here. How would you keep them away from it, you know? <laughs> Thank you for all you guys are doing. <laughs> the floor is yours. Good evening. My name is Angie Hernandez Ramos, and I am the president and captain of the mock trial team. I would like to start off by thanking the Board of Education as well as our district for all the support and aid that you've given us. I'd like to also introduce you to a fellow member of the mock trial team, Nina Fischilla. Good evening. My name is Nina Fischilla, and I'm a sophomore captain on mock trial. We also thank the coaches, Ms. Biagi, and teacher advisor, Mr. Outson, and of course, our incred incredible attorney advisor, who I think you guys might know, Mr. Xavier Palacios, who goes above and beyond coaching us to be our absolute best in and out of the courtroom. We gained many newcomers this year, but after spending countless hours practicing and practicing and practicing, we were able to secure our spot as the 2023 county championships champions, placing us in the top eight teams in the state. As a highly involved student, I can state with absolute certainty that this is one of the most special programs that I've ever had the privilege of being a part of. The connections formed throughout this experience is truly unlike any other. The team really forms a close bond, being able to, despite what we do outside of mock trial, we work together to, um, to reach a common goal. The amount of knowledge that we've gained through mock trial is remarkable and is applicable to all aspects of life. From grasping and practicing law, understanding how to effectively do research and apply those facts, building skills in teamwork, leadership, time management, and public speaking, and of course, learning how to effectively argue an objective with poise in a respectful and concise manner, which I'm sure my parents are thrilled about. <laughs> <laughs> I have so much to owe to this exceptional program and I couldn't be more grateful to be a member. I could go on and on, but thanks to mock trial, I've been taught how to deliver my point in a, within a time limit. So now I'd like to introduce um, our extraordinary senior and president, Angie Hernandez-Ramos. Thank you, Ms. Fischella, for that. 
Well, mock trial has just been such a great experience. And really, we are made of such strong individuals from all corners of our school. We have athletes, musicians, theater kids, really anyone you can think of. It is due to mock trial and the attention and help that we get from our advisors that really refines us and allows us to become individuals that can really hold our own in situations that are highly, highly stressful. I'd like to thank all of you guys once more for all of the support and all of the help in the, I want to say, the maintenance of this great program that really has allowed us all to become confident individuals that will thrive in any situation that we may face ourselves in the future. Thank you. I know I speak for all of the board when we say best of luck, or as we say in the theater, break a leg at the state championship. Moving on. Congratulations once again, folks. Okay, next I'm going to invite, I think he's still here, our athletic director, Mr. Hoops, <laughs> to the lectern to, in, uh, to introduce some of our fall and actually all of our fall and winter all-state student athletes. Um, th this has been a transformation of sorts over the past couple of years in athletics. We've added a number of new programs and Obviously, through mock trial, through natural, uh, National History Day, through so many of the other things that, that we've been doing through the years, and some of which are, are new over the past few years, trying to provide our students with as, as many opportunities and choices as, as possible. And I have to thank all of the folks who are running these programs and working with our children for making that happen. So I thank you. Thank you all, and thank you, Mr. Hoops. We'll begin with the two Huntington's two Suffolk Zone Award recipients. The Suffolk jo Zone chapter of the New York State Association of Health, Physical Education, Recreation, Recreation and Dance recognizes two individuals from every Suffolk High School's graduating class. The award criteria involves achievement in phys ed and health, overall academic performance, outstanding character and leadership in classes and during school-wide activities. Our first Recipient is Gianna Fort, who's been on the high honor roll during every academic marking period throughout the four years of high school. She's a New York State Scholar Athlete. She's in three separate academic honor societies. She's participating in the school's career internship program. She served as captain of the soccer, basketball, and cross teams, won awards in all three sports, volunteered as a youth coach collected uh, food for donation to the Helping Hand Rescue Mission, participated in a holiday gift-giving initiative for children from struggling families. She's done it all. Stony Brook University has recruited Gianna to play on its NCAA Division I lacrosse team. She plans to study health science. Gianna Ford. Our second recipient is Anthony Nunziata, who has also excelled academically, as also a multiple-time New York State Scholar athlete. He's earned varsity letters in football, wrestling, and lacrosse, serving as captain and quarterback of the football team, captain and face-off specialist currently for the lacrosse team, a hard worker on and off the field, a member of four different academic honor societies. He also has been on the high honor roll throughout high school. Volunteered to help the homeless and the hungry through a variety of charitable organizations. Yale University has recruited Anthony to play on its NCAA Division I lacrosse team. He plans to study economics. Anthony Annunziata. Thank you. Thank you. 
It's a pleasure to introduce boys swimming coach Meg McConnell, who will speak briefly about state champion Pierre Leroy and all state swimmers Evan Spagnoletti, Lucas Spagnoletti, and Max Leroy. Hi. These are our amazing boys. <laughs> In a funny twist, I'm sure you could tell by their names, they're related. We got two sets of siblings, which is, um, it's funny, I have not had this in a while in swimming, but when I was growing up, swimming was always a family thing, so it's kind of nice for me to see this coming back. Um, so all four of these boys are all state. They, at our Suffolk County Championship, they took second in the medley relay, went up to states, and took eighth, so that made them all state. Max, you'll see there's another funny family thing. Max took fifth in the counties in the 500 free, just put that in the back of your head. Lucas took fifth in the 100 fly. Put that in the back of your head. We go upstate. Not only did we have the amazing relay team, but Evan and Pierre swam in individual events. And so in a funny twist, Evan crushed it in the 100 fly. Something funny going on here. Um, he ended up taking second in the county, but he was fifth in the state in the 100 fly. I'm sensing a theme. Um, and then Pierre, of course, just crushed his 200 free, got second in, um, in, you know, in the state, which made him all county, all Long Island, and all state. But then towards the end of the meet, everybody's favorite or very least favorite event, the 500 free, Pierre came out state champ, and that he's also amongst all his other honors is All-American Consideration Time. So you notice they both did the 500. It's a, it, there's a whole family thing going on here. Um, Evan has just committed to UPenn. Pierre is off to Loyola. So now we're down to just these two brothers to hold up. And I have bright hopes. And we thank you for supporting us. Uh, I've been involved in this program for 30 something years. I appreciate that now not only do you continue to support us, but you let us honor these boys in front of everybody. So thank you for that. Okay, Coach Kathy Wright will now speak briefly about Laurel Bond, who led Huntington's field hockey team to its greatest season ever. She's an all-state player. Our varsity field hockey team had an amazing season this fall. It was such a great group of girls that had been together for so long. Um, and to coach them was just such an honor. Um, I'd like to thank my assistant coach, um, Allison Conlon, for all her help and support this season. And I'd like to take a moment to recognize and also thank our JV coach, Hilvi Stanford, and our middle school coach, Marissa Kaplan, for helping to build such a strong field hockey program with Coach Conlon and I. I would also like to thank Jim Hoops, our athletic director, for everything he does for our Huntington teams. This year we started our season in third place in Suffolk County. That was the hardest group, that was the hardest that we've ever played. That was the most competitive um, games and season that I have ever coached. And we ended our season with an overall record of 13 and three. Going into playoff, playoffs, we remained in third place. 
um, we progressed through playoffs to the semifinal county game with Ward Melville. The Huntington Field Hockey varsity team finished their postseason play with an overall record of 14 and 4. Um, I am honored to recognize Laurel Bond as a gifted, talented Huntington athlete that led her team with one, t one win after another. Laurel received the All State Field Hockey Award this year. Laurel is a four year varsity senior midfield forward defender. <laughs> she played everything for us, for Huntington and a two year captain. She was previously all county in 2021. This season, she had 14 goals and six assists, ranking her as the ninth leading scorer in Suffolk County and sixth in Division I. Laurel was the leading force for our team, finishing our season third in Division I, and she took us into playoffs. She has excellent, exceptional field awareness, seeing the entire field and directing her teammates. She demonstrated the ability to intercept the ball without hesitation with well-timed cuts, jabs, and block tackles. She played selfishly and would always look to find the open player to assist on goals. One of her strongest attributes was her ability to recover back on defense to prevent goals and stop offensive plays. Her skill and field presence has been noticed and acknowledged by every coach in the past two seasons. Laurel is the heart of our team and she is continuously um, self-reflecting and challenging herself to pr improve each game. She left everything, Laurel, everything out on the field. And as we entered into playoffs and faced two very competitive teams, Smithtown West in the second round and Ward Melville in the semifinals, Laurel was a dominating force. Her Laure Laurel's powerful stops on the defensive corners allowed us to hold Ward Melville to the score of zero to two. Previously in years that I have played Ward Melville, we have been zero and six, zero and seven. For us, that was Tremendous, that was amazing, and Laurel played to the last whistle. Along with receiving the 2022, the, the 2022 All-State Award, Laurel has made the 2022 All-Northeast Region second team. She received the Defensive Player of the Year 2022. She received the Exceptional Senior Award at the Suffolk County Field Hockey Award Dinner. She made the 2022 National Field Hockey Coaching Association High School Academic Squad and was recognized as a Scholar of Distinction. She made the 2022 National Field Hockey Coaching Association High School Impact Senior Team. She played in the Senior All-Star Game for Suffolk County 2022, and she's valedictorian for her class. Laurel is such an exceptional athlete that Huntington High School was so lucky to have. Coach Conlon and I are so proud of all her accomplishments. It's been such a joy to coach you, Laurel, for the last four years. Congratulations, Laurel, on such an impressive field hockey career for Huntington High School. I will never, ever forget coaching you. Girls swimming coach Christopher Helmke will speak briefly about multiple time all state swimmer Catherine Montefusco. Uh, good evening. Um, yeah, my name is Chris Helmke. I'm a teacher in the district and I've been the uh, girls' varsity swim coach for quite some time now. Coach Meg and I have been uh, coaching girls' varsity and uh, She's just an incredible person. I, I want to thank her right now for all the, uh, the time uh, put into swimming and, and her support. Um, but more than that, uh, it's a privilege to honor uh, this young lady, Catherine Montefusco, uh, for her achievements in varsity swimming. Um, Catherine swam for us for six years, came uh, with us uh, as a seventh grader, and um, she qualified for states five of those six years. We only got up to states four times because of COVID, knocked us out one year. But um, 
you know, the accomplishments were phenomenal. It was it, always wonderful to watch her swim. The competition's been fantastic over these years. Um, Catherine uh, is a specialist in the 100 breaststroke. Uh, each year that she went to states and received all, all state honors uh, in breaststroke, later in the years, uh, she added the 200 freestyle and the 200 individual medley as well. Uh, but always came uh, back from states as a winner. Um, Catherine um, is also something uh, that I should mention. Catherine's a scholar athlete. And like many of these young men and women today, um, being able to maintain an extremely high grade point average while you're an athlete and while you're able to do what they do is just incredible. It makes me proud as a teacher and as a coach as well. And it's a, it's a true testament to uh, our Huntington students. Um, Catherine's gonna be attending Villanova University in the fall. She'll be swimming for them. And we couldn't be prouder. Love you, kid. Last but never least, our boys track and field coach, Ronald E. Wilson, will speak about his state champions in the 4x400 meter relay. Good evening, um, members of the board, Mr. Polanski, Mr. Hoops, Mr. Uh, Cusack, everyone who's here, thank you for all the support you've given us down through the years and especially this year. Uh, these young men have done an extraordinary job for us here in Huntington. Um, it was said best actually uh, on Miles Split's uh, Instagram when they said track and field uh, runs through Huntington on Long Island. So that's because of these young men right here uh, in front of you. Um, we really didn't have a great league tournament. Um, we finished like a distance fourth, but the following week uh, at the counties, um, we finished close, a close second with uh, four county championships. Uh, Matt had two, uh, Kendra won the four, and then our four by four uh, won the relay. And then uh, just a week later uh, at the uh, state qualifier, uh, these young men, did it again, duplicating in those same efforts. Kendra winning the six. Matt chose to just win, uh, go in one event, winning the thousand to go upstate. And uh, our relay um, also captured a victory as well. Now, with the four by four relay, what's so great about it is that you actually have two um, alternates that you can have because when you are like Huntington, we have uh, kids doing multiple events. And so you allowed. Uh, these alternates to run uh, in the trials. And Ryan Centino did a phenomenal job for us here, helping us to get to states. And he ran as an alternate. And another young man, uh, Johan Fajardo, who's not here tonight, he also ran as an alternate here uh, in the counties and also at the uh, state meet. So again, uh, these young men have done an extraordinary job for us. They won the four by four state championship. And then a week later, uh, at the Nike Indoor National Championship, they won the uh, sprint medley relay, which consists of a, um, two people running 200, one running the four, and um, Matt running the eight, uh, which was a tough race for him. Uh, none of these things would be possible. Yes, I'm there as the, the coach, but uh, my backbone, the backbone of this program is our assistant coach, Coach Eli Acosta. Please give him a round of applause. <laughs> And uh, one who knows about running as an alternate is Jamar Francis, because he ran as an alternate as a seventh grader on our relay team. And coaches said, you got to be crazy to put a seventh grade at the state qualification meet as an alternate on your relay. But when you trust your athletes, uh, you trust them to do what's needed to be done, uh, they get the job done for you. So congratulations to each of you. Kender uh, is uh, heading to Malloy College. 
Matt is going to the University of Rhode Island. Jamar is going to still be here for another year with us here in Huntington, thank God. And then uh, Ryan is heading to um, over here to uh, Suffolk Community College. And we are very proud of these young men. And again, uh, we appreciate all the support you've given us down through the years. Mr. Polanski, it's been a great ride with you these, in, during your tenure. Uh, you have quite a few state championships and indoor championships in track and field that you can uh, have and say proudly. Thank you. Okay, at this time, I'd like to invite up to the lectern Mr. Brian Stellato to present several groups of Fine Arts Awards. Mr. Stellato, thank you. Good evening, everyone. First off, I'd like to thank all the members of the Board of Education, Mr. Polanski, Central Administration, for taking the time tonight to recognize some of our wonderfully, amazingly talented young artists here in Huntington. Um, we're going to do this in three groups. We are so fortunate here in the community and in Huntington to have multiple professional arts venues and organizations uh, that both we can collaborate with, but also can give an opportunity for our students' work to be featured in a professional setting. And that's just one of the many things that makes, and, and we're seeing so many of them tonight, one of the many things that makes Huntington such a wonderful community. So what I'd like to do is bring up the first group all together, and then I'll tell you a little bit about Long Island's best. Uh, we are going to call up five young artists here. If you are here, please come up. Deanna Augustine. Daisy Franciscovich, Annika Galvin, Sebastian Ramirez, and Sophia Tyne. So in front of you are five young artists who actually are about to be featured. Uh, in Heckscher Museum of Art's 27th annual Long Island's Best Young Artist Exhibition. Uh, this is an exhibition that happens right down the road at the Heckscher Museum of Art. And it actually opens uh, at the end of next week on April 29th, little opening ceremony coming up, and it'll run until June 4th. Uh, about 77 high schools submitted work toward this competition. Uh, about 553 pieces of work were evaluated and 91 pieces of work were chosen to be featured at the Heckscher Museum of Art. And we've got five right here of our amazingly talented Huntington students. So congratulations once again.
And I definitely would like to mention uh, a big, big thank you to Ms. Kazmir Mohanty and Ms. Kristen Singer for being the high school teachers to guide those Long Island Best Artists. So a round of applause for our two staff members. Okay, next up, uh, we're gonna be calling up a group of seven high school artists uh, that are our high school high arts showcase participants that actually happened last month over at the uh, Huntington Arts Council down the road on Main Street. So I'm gonna call you up as a group once again here. We have seven students. If you're here, come on up. Victoria Bafumo. <laughs> Katerina Damiano. Annika Galvin. Molly Heffernan. Gianni Portia Moriera. Nikolai Safarian and Annabelle Young. Oh, here comes Annabelle. Annabelle fresh off the golf course, yes? Yes. So just to tell you a little bit uh, before we take our picture about the High Art Showcase, uh, Mr. Cusack and, and Mr. Polanski and myself had the privilege of getting over to uh, the gallery on Main Street a few weeks back. Uh, this is a High Arts exhibition on Main Street Gallery. Uh, the show ran from March 17th through just uh, yesterday on April 16th. And I do want to take a moment and mention all of the art teachers at the high school, our amazing art staff that helped to guide our artists and guide their work. We have Kim Valerio, Pam Pafard, Kazmira Mohanty, Heather Swan, Kristen Singer, Ayala Jetta, and no end actually, that's everybody. So a please round of applause for these students. And one final group of students here. Um, and I have to give a very large shout out uh, to Miss Jessica Sims, who is our seventh and eighth grade, one of our seventh and eighth grade art teachers over at Finley Middle School. Uh, but Miss Sims runs our studio art program at Finley. Uh, and she is doing amazing, amazing work with our students and preparing them to enter our art program at the high school. And she came to me with an opportunity for students at the middle school level to hopefully get their work featured in a professional setting. And I believe this is the first time in quite some time that we have middle school student artwork uh, shown in this type of way, similar to what we've done for years at the high school. So I'm really excited to acknowledge these eighth grade students and these artists who will be making their way up to the high school. So let me call you up as a group. I believe we have eight students. We have Angeline Ariega Vega, <laughs> Anya Galeski, <laughs> Kate Gordon, <laughs> Jordan Gross, <laughs> Veda Gross, <laughs> Talia Hayden, <laughs> Leah McManus. And Natalie Posada. Thanks for coming. So just a little additional information here. Uh, this is Finley Middle School eighth grade studio art students who had their work chosen for exhibit at the second annual middle and high school student artist juried show at Flower Field in St. James. Uh, their artwork was on display from March 4th through March 30th. 
Uh, these were their charcoal and graphite still life projects. And it really was amazing to see their work uh, shown in this professional setting. So congratulations once again, and congratulations to Miss Sims. Okay, we were actually informed of this last set of honors after we had started planning tonight's event, uh, but very, very special nonetheless. We're proud to make this final acknowledgement this evening. And to do so, I'd like to in introduce once again, Principal Brendan Cusack, Huntington High School. Thank you. Uh, my next duo that I'd like to introduce are two sisters who are consistently making an impact throughout Huntington. They are Andrea and Damaris Manny Munoz. You've already seen them, so come on up. I get to be up here twice, and you get to be up here twice. It's awesome. Um, these two students are uh, receiving the Students Building Bridges Award from the Jewish Community Relations Council of Long Island, and that's during the Holocaust Remembrance Day commemoration, which is later in April. Uh, this is for their community work in bringing people together and serving as true role models in Huntington. Damaris and Andrea have shared their time, effort, and skills for many years with the Helping Hand Rescue Mission, and they serve as mentors in our New World Club, in addition to the many activities, musical endeavors, and sports in which they are, are involved in at Huntington High School. These juniors simply do it all and they do it every single day with the biggest smile you can imagine. We appreciate that, I appreciate that, and I'm so proud of you guys and everything that you do and the way that you represent Huntington. I'm so happy that you're receiving this honor tonight and also later in April. Thank you guys. as they exit, one more round of applause for these fine young people. That was fun. We'll take a two minute recess just to allow everybody to move out. I know there's homework to be done tonight.
All right, we can get started again. Chris, are we good? Okay. So I should start talking? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> that brings us to our second item for discussion, which is the 2023-24 school district budget and property tax report card. Mm -hmm. Take it away, Mr. Clancy. Okay, I think I'm gonna, if, if it's okay with the board, I'm gonna do it from here. It's a quick presentation, and obviously the, the ending proposed action is adoption of the 22-23, uh, 2023-24 budget along with the property tax report card. Mm -hmm. So we'll start with the state of affairs in New York State that I hope to be able to provide a, a, a period at the end of the sentence this evening, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen because earlier today the legislature, state legislature put together another package leading to a budget extender through April 20th. So there is no state budget in place at this point which does make for a, just a drop of discomfort as we have no choice but to adopt our budget this evening. There is no flexibility here. The extender obviously allows the state to continue meeting payroll. Uh, it does not help school districts and, and other municipalities that are, uh, no pun intended, banking on a finalized budget to inform their budgets. Uh, reports do suggest that progress has been made on the major policy related issues which have nothing to do with education per se, and that's bail reform, housing to name two of them, the primary educational issues that lie in the balance, as indicated here, the charter school cap, the executive budget proposal had a uh, premise that would extend that cap or increase that cap. The high impact tutoring set aside is a package of monies that's attached to the foundation aid increase that school districts received. Uh, for us, that's about 400 and something thousand dollars out of uh, about four million that we would be required to direct in a high impact tutoring manner, and it, 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 right now that's under discussion. The Senate and the Assembly both recommend removing that set aside. It remains to be seen whether it will be removed or they'll find some middle ground between what the governor proposed and the zero that the, other, that the two houses proposed. The other piece that lies in the balance is universal free meals that has not been decided as of yet. So we do expect, in, Based on the fact that the extender is only through April 20th, my hope is, I'm not going to say my expectation is, my hope is that this budget at the state level will be decided by the end of this week. So that said, this is what we're recommending for 2023-2024. Uh, this is unchanged in summative form from the presentation made at last week's board meeting. So you can see the 2022-23 current numbers, current budget that we're working with right now, the recommendation in the third column, column right in the middle, Budget 146, 347, with a tax levy of 113, 711, 800. Uh, the budget to budget increase, which I'll highlight again on the next slide, is 2.36%. The tax levy at 0.88%. That follows a 0.00% tax, uh, tax levy increase last year and a 0.33% increase the year before that. Um, and listen, I know every penny counts here, and I also know that um, taxes on Long Island are exorbitant. But if you look at us in comparison to some of our, our neighboring districts on Long Island across the state, we've done a very good job of managing our debt and managing our expenditures while still very carefully managing finances so that we can offer our children the opportunities that, that you saw presented to you this evening and then some. The assessed valuation, interestingly, we did receive some information at the end of last week that was a little bit concerning, but I, how concerning it's very difficult to tell. Each year at about this time, I asked Dr. Acker, and I should have mentioned this earlier, I apologize, Dr. Acker is, is out ill this evening, that's why she is not here, and um, this would actually be her final budget adoption meeting, so she was not happy about not being here this evening, but I asked her to reach out annually to the uh, Huntington, Town of Huntington Assessor's Office to grab an average residential assessment for properties, residential properties in the Huntington School District. That number came in on Friday at $3,357. That's not an assessed value of a home in terms of its market value. That's the number that's used to calculate a tax bill. Usually we're in the 3400 3415 area, so that number was a little bit lower than expected. And I bring that up now because we've projected an assessed value, a flat movement from the 44851997 that is in place, the actual number for this year and the projected number for next year, we, we left it unchanged. It's not a number that we get to manipulate or negotiate. It's a number that will impact 
the tax rate one way or another. We do not expect it to venture far from that 44851997, but based on looking at an, a lower average assessment on the residential side, it is possible that may fall lower. It's possible it's unrelated because it doesn't include anything about commercial properties. But again, that does not impact our budget. It does not impact our tax levy. It will, that assessed value at the end of the day, we receive that sometime in October. It will determine the actual number on the tax bill. Whole another um, collection of problems that come with the fact that we don't collect, we don't gather our taxes here. The town does not collect our taxes until after the school year begins, which is the reason we have to take out or sell tax anticipation notes to cover some of those expenditures until we receive the tax, the, the, the tax levy or the taxes from our residents. But again, that assessed valuation number is not settled until October. And the rest of it is, is all summative in nature. So again, we're looking at a 2.36% budget to budget increase from this year to next year and a 0.88% tax levy increase, and that also matches the tax rate expectation or the increase expectation, primarily because we're leaving that assessed valuation number flat for now. Which is a somewhat excess. Correct. And there are your numbers in summative form. Okay, moving through this quickly, I presented a version of this during the last meeting as well, just some of the things that we consider as we plan a budget each year, and, and once again, I've done it before, I'll do it again, thanking the principals, the directors, all of the, the, the various budget managers, as we call them throughout the district, that start back in, in, in September, at the end of September, beginning of October, looking at their current year's budget and looking at what they believe they're going to need or project their needs for the following year. And we go through many iterations of departmental uh, budgets that allow us to, to, to get to the point where we are today. So we're always looking to align with our, our district mission, core beliefs, annual goals, looking to support. There's a, a slew of new courses, another slate of them to be presented shortly this evening. Uh, new programs, K through 12, that we're very proud to have, have developed in consultation with our staff here. Um, we're, just particularly in the wake of the pandemic, we're looking to, at the very least, maintain class sizes and in some places, depending on where, which school, and, and what the grade levels that are rolling up look like, uh, possibly reduce class sizes, enhance our multi-tiered student supports and response to intervention programs, district facilities based on a five-year capital plan. Most of that is reflected in our capital proposition, but there is a transfer to capital in the general fund as well. And we're always looking at long-term fiscal impacts in terms of, of, of anything we can. And 2024-25 could be a potentially challenging year because the foundation phase-in is done and the um, federal stimulus funding, the CARES Act, the CURSA funding, the ARPA funding, it all comes to an end before, before the end of the 24-25 school year. So there may be a different type of decision-making process when we get to that point. So some of the notable additions, not to read them to you, but staffing, we spoke about that a few meetings ago. There are, I believe it was 11 and a half or 12 and a half, 12, 12 and a half total positions that includes a teaching assistant position as well that have been recommended district-wide. Um, in various places, K through 12, buildings and grounds, and th there are more, there are reductions as well in some areas, but just to give you a sense of some of the more costly additions, a construction manager, this is something we're, we're going to need this summer primarily because our district facilities director is retiring and we have a slew of work being done across the district this summer, which is shortly to be approved and ready to go. Uh, iReady implementation. That is something we've already implemented very successfully at the middle level. Now we're bringing that down to it as a diagnostic assessment and uh, certainly a data generating process that helps us to address individual student needs. We're bringing that down to the elementary level. So it's the software itself and the professional development to go along with it. And as the board knows, 250000 is allocated in the general fund budget for one specific capital project, the high school greenhouse reconstruction. And if all goes as planned, depending on how this state budget Ultimately, turns out we would receive the state aid on that back, uh, state state aid back on that during the first year following. Typically, it's a multi-year amortization process, but we'd get the, about the forty percent uh, return on that investment the following year. So, in sum, what's going to be on the ballot on May sixteenth, the twenty three twenty four budget is Proposition Number One. Budget is always Proposition Number One. Proposition Number Two is the Capital Reserve Appropriation, the Capital Proposal. And again, just a reminder, those projects are funded via monies that are already in a number of 
uh, building improvement fund or capital reserve accounts. This is money that's there, but by law we require voter, voter approval to release those monies for the capital projects that we have on the proposition itself. The fact that the money is there, there's no impact on the levy, there's no impact on the tax rate, there's no impact on taxes at all. If these projects are not approved, we must put the money right back into the capital reserve accounts. The money cannot be used for anything else. In that, we are proposing a tax levy increase this year as uh, below 1% as it may be. If the voters do not approve a budget, there is a contingency budget that has to be built. It has already been constructed. Just some of the things that impact um, school finances, when, or district finances, when a contingency budget has to be adopted. We have to pull out equipment purchases. We've got to remove the bulk of uh, professional de development and conferences. We've got to remove most contracted and consult consultant services. We've got to adjust the percentage components of the three-part budget, administrative capital, and, and uh, program. We have to restrict public use of school buildings and grounds. These are not our rules. This is what goes along with this type of budget. Um, reduce use of reserves and appropriated fund balances, revenue sources, some of which we have in our budget as we speak. So we would have to reduce the current budget by one point, just over 1.2 million, and that includes 769,000, just about, just short of that, in equipment. And this is what it looks like in tabular form. And you'll also notice, even with a contingency budget, there is a 1.55% budget-to-budget increase, and that increase is reflected in other revenue sources. <clears throat> so the, um, the fact remains that even though there is no increase in the tax levy because of the other revenue sources we're banking on, there would still be a, an increase in budget from one year to the next. But we'd still have to reduce from our current proposal the 1.204607 million. And proposition number two, this is a repeat slide from the previous presentation on April 10th. Just again, list out the projects that are included on proposition number two. Primarily from our five-year capital plan, but also inclusive of two wants, and that is the Finley Science Classroom reconstruction and the installation of lighting on the new turf field, which is actually on the slate to be approved. The field itself a uh, bid award on tonight's agenda. <laughs> As I mentioned, the two asterisks, the two asterisks there. Uh, number one, the $250,000 for the replacement of the aluminum framing of the greenhouse at the high school. That is not in this proposition. It's actually in the general fund, and we did that by design because we anticipate being allowed to put one $250,000 project in the general fund and get the full aid back the following year. That's in the current state budget proposal. And just a reminder that the Finley Science Classrooms and the high school lighting, that is not included in our current five-year capital plan, primarily because they are uh, not necessities, although the science classrooms and, and um, prep room in between are certainly, they leave much to be desired as compared to the two new classrooms and prep room that we prepared a few years back. And timeline, just to kind of go back and look at where we are now and the two items remaining, uh, April 17th is today's date. This is the night that the board is going to review and adopt the budget. Public budget hearing on May 8th and the vote itself on May 16th. Okay. So before we make any comments or ask any questions, I'm going to ask for a motion. It is upon recommendation from the superintendent of schools that the Board of Education adopt a budget for the 2023-24 school year in the amount of $146,347,091.50. To be placed on the ballot for the May 16th, 2023 annual vote and election. It is further recommended that the Board of Education approve the associated 2023 2024 property tax report card. A motion from Bill and a second from Tom. Okay, so now, does anyone have any questions? Okay, well, I'll just start off by um, thanking. Dr. Acker and her team, and Mr. Polanski, and I am confident that Mr. Hender and Ms. McCoy had had a hand in the budget as well, along with all of the other administrators, the principals, the directors. It, it, it takes an army to create such a responsible budget, and just year after year, I'm blown away by the amount of work with accuracy and fidelity that goes into this process. and. I'm 
thank you is not really enough, but that's what I have to say. <laughs> and I'll, I'll just reiterate, I'm sorry Kathy is not here yes. this evening to be present for this because this is uh, a lot of time and energy from her and her staff go into. Um, it's very difficult to do this when you have so many things going on at the same time, and I can speak for myself as well, but you know, sometimes I know uh, we, we, we've got to put ourselves in a position where you, you, you have to look at the numbers in uninterrupted fashion. Mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, it, it, it's a process, and as you mentioned, Army, everybody in, in this room this evening and all those that work with them had a hand in this. So mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a very responsibly constructed budget. I think it addresses the needs of our students and our families here, and um, it's something we can be proud of. Anyone else? All right, then, all in favor? That is all in favor. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. It is upon recommendation from the Superintendent of Schools that the Board of Education review as a second read and adopt revised board policy 4421, non-bargaining unit staff, terms and conditions of employment. I have a motion from Teresa and a second from Michelle. Questions? I think we discussed it last time pretty thoroughly. Okay, all in favor? That is approved. Thank you. Everyone. Ms. McCoy. It is upon recommendation from the Superintendent of Schools that the Board of Education approve CSE, CPSE submissions as delineated. A motion from Bill and a second from Teresa. All in favor? That's everyone. It is upon recommendation from the Superintendent of Schools that the Board of Education adopt the attached district shared decision making plan revised for the 2023 2024 school year. A motion. From Kelly and a second from Xavier. Since the draft plan was reviewed and adopted by the board in March, we received some additional feedback that consisted of the following. Clarifying language, we removed an appeals process that was not required, and we added two sections titled Means and Standards for Evaluating Improvement and State and Federal Requirements for Parental Involvement, which are required by regulation. There are minor changes to the plan, but we wanted to have it updated and prepared for rollout in the 23-24 school year. Thank you for refining it. Does anyone have any questions about those changes? Well, all in favor? That's everyone. It is upon recommendation from the Superintendent of Schools that the Board of Education approve revised advanced placement computer science principles for initial implementation in the 2023-2024 school year. A motion from Michelle and a second from Teresa. So this, this AP Computer Science Principles course was already approved this winter for rollout in the 23-24 school year. After attending a conference with Siena College, Dr. Grassani, our computer science teacher, Mr. Wagner, and I took a deep look at the cost, benefits, and curriculum that varied between Siena and the Project Lead the Way curriculum that we were considering. Uh, for the introductory college level computing curriculum. The benefits to partnering with Siena are huge. Um, they cut, it's a dual enrollment course, so they can have college and or AP credit at $200 per course. Free and reduced lunch students get the college credit at no cost. We have access to free curriculum. Uh, there's a community of other computer science teachers, which for Mr. Wagner, who is the only computer science teacher at this time, many districts are in the same situation, where if you partner with Siena, you have this whole network of teachers that you can now collaborate with, communicate with, get ideas from. So he's very excited about that opportunity. Free staff development, um, access to many new resources, weekly lesson planning, uh, projects, professional development for our teachers once a month. Uh, I could go on and on, but it's really a great opportunity, and we thought it far outweighed the, the, um, the thought of, of using the Project Lead the Way curriculum. So we wanted to move forward with this with your approval. Great. I just, as a general note, I'll just say that I appreciate that even though you had something done and in the books that you, you know, were open to looking for something even better and saying, do we want to make it better and improve it even before it starts? So I find that admirable. So I just wanted to mention that. So Thank you. A role like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? Questions? I just wanted to make a just a quick statement here. Having the dual enrollment program um, for the uh, with Siena, uh, perhaps if there's a moment where students are trying to get credit uh, for uh, this particular class, there. Um, 
given an opportunity that this is a regular college credit, and perhaps if a university or college is not accepting AP credits for whatever reason, they're kind of covered on both ends, correct? With Absolutely. This? Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. That's a great job. We, we couldn't pass it up. No, no. <laughs> and you, you're probably aware, but in the course proposal attachment, there is a list of, of those benefits mm -hmm. in public view, so. Yeah. All right, all right, then all in favor? That is everyone. It is upon recommendation from the Superintendent of Schools that the Board of Education approve instrumental methods for initial implementation in the 2023-2024 school year. A motion from Xavier and a second from Michelle. So this class is, this is very exciting. I, it was, uh, Mr. Salato brought this to our attention and we thought it was a great idea. Uh, this class will give our students a chance or a second chance to be part of our wonderful instrumental music program in Huntington. Uh, our numbers have been, you know, a bit lower um, since COVID. Uh, we've had some students that may have had an inability to get to early morning rehearsals and maybe they have not played their instrument for the last couple of years. So this opportunity allows students to begin playing their instrument every other day in a lesson setting so they'll progress quickly. They'll reach a certain level of proficiency by the spring concert and will be able to perform at the seventh grade band concert uh, and spring concert, of course. Um, I'm sorry, the seventh grade spring concert and then be placed in the eighth grade band the following year. So this really is a second chance at picking up an instrument and getting involved in our instrumental music program. It's awesome. amazing. I don't know if um, you probably did think of this, but I'll just say it publicly anyway. I, from personal experience, I had a child who did not pick up an instrument in the appropriate grade, um, mainly because of his development at the, at the time was not appropriate really for him to play an instrument, but possibly in seventh grade, he would have had better repeat skills, better attention skills, and um, he would have known about his musical abilities and would have benefited from something like this. So I personally um, think it's amazing. And this would replace their, their general music course. So it's not an increase in staffing. So it really is a win-win for kids. And uh, we, we expect some, some good numbers in this class starting next year. Fantastic. No pressure, Mrs. Salado. <laughs> <laughs> just to, to throw in the fact that Mrs. Salado has really been working extraordinarily hard to look at the schedules and how we structure rehearsals at all levels so that we can maximize participation. Uh, we had a big problem this year, and it was a good problem to have to a degree, mm -hmm. where we had so many more children participating in the early morning programs that we had to redesign transportation to be able to accommodate all of them, and that's that's effort right there. We appreciate it. We're growing, and that's that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. All in favor? That's everyone. It is upon recommendation from the superintendent of schools that the Board of Education approve visual journaling for initial implementation in the 2024-2025 school year. A motion from Teresa and a second from Tom. Visual journaling is a reflective process that involves exploring concepts, ideas, and thoughts to understand and create personal meaning. Through visual journaling, students of all levels of artistic ability and experience will gain greater skill and knowledge in using a variety of materials, mediums, and techniques with an emphasis on experimentation and personal expression. Students will critique their own work and the work of others, provide peer-to-peer -peer feedback, and reflect on both their written and artistic work to hone their skills. Students will also learn bookbinding techniques and create a variety of journals that will be filled with their own art. Okay, any questions? All in favor? Right, Thank you. Again. Thank you. Once again. Mr. Hunter. All right, it is upon recommendation from the Superintendent of Schools that the Board of Education approve personnel items on Schedules 5, 8, and 16. A motion from Michelle and a second. Xavier, all in favor? That is everyone. Is that announcing? Oh, no, we're good. Okay. <coughs> last time I skipped over the announcement, so I want yes. to make sure. It's, just, it's been a short time since <laughs> yes. the last meeting, so we're, we're fine. Okay. So that brings us to you, right? Uh, yes. Uh, on behalf of Dr. Acker, I am recommending uh, that the board approve business items delineated in items I through L. A motion from Michelle and a second from Teresa. Yes. 
No questions? All in favor? Yes, everyone. So Start with Xavier, yeah. There is an announcement, and it's um, it's actually a nice trend that we're seeing. <laughs> These big donations are nice, but I'm gonna I'm gonna preface the announcement with something that I found that I think could give a little history on who the donation's from. Uh, an accomplished musician and Huntington Union Free School District music teacher, Miss Shoemaker, enjoyed a three decade long career as a Blue Devil marching band director. Ms. Shoemaker's love of music and her talent was inherited from both sides of her family when they were music educators and opera singers. She saw her first parade at age four and fell in love. Ms. Shoemaker began studying a clarinet as a fourth grader and later marched during the opening ceremonies of Disneyland in Anaheim on July 17, 1955 and in four tournament, tournament of Roses parades in Pasadena. A graduate of Downey High School in Modesto, California, Ms. Shoemaker studied at Long Beach State for two years and then accepted a full scholarship as the first chair clarinet at the University of Nevada, Reno. She later moved to Columbus, Ohio and took classes at Ohio State while working in a music store there. Ms. Shoemaker accepted a teaching position at Huntington Union Free School District in 1967, initially working at Flower Hill and Woodbury Avenue School. She later became the Finley Junior High School band director and moved to Huntington High School in 1982 where she spent 15 years as a teacher and marching band director before retiring in 1997. And now to the announcement, the estate of Linda Shoemaker would like to donate $120,250 to establish the Linda Shoemaker Blue Devil Scholarship Fund in memory of Ms. Shoemaker, a former Huntington teacher this scholarship will provide financial support for students pursuing a degree in instrumental music education. Quite a legacy. Quite a legacy, I said. Absolutely. Yeah. Some of those students taking that new uh, instrumental class are future scholarship recipients. <laughs> That's right. Very possible. <laughs> That's right. Thank you, Xavier. Just pleased to announce, you're looking at it, but we've all, as school districts, had some difficulties with the short staff at the Office of Facilities Planning at the State Education Department. So we've pushed hard to make sure that our capital project proposals architecturally on an engineering basis and, and on a fiscal basis have been approved. And that is, in fact, what has happened. So this evening, the board has thank you for accepting the bid awards for the last year's voter approved projects, the turf field at Huntington High School, the roof replacement and uh, roof replacement at both Huntington High School and Jack Abrams STEM, and the parking lot reconstruction phase two at, at Finley Middle School. Those will occur on a timely basis. Very so, exciting. Yes. Thank you for your advocacy in that area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Yeah. Um, okay. That brings us to our, oops. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, we just awarded the bids. Um, when, are, when are each of those projects expected to under start? This summer. This summer. This summer. This, this summer. This this summer. summer. This summer. Right, these are voter approved yep. in uh, yeah. May of 2022. But so the, the contractors were all ready to go. Right. Yeah. So we had everything prepared for this moment, but uh, unfortunately until we have the building permit in hand, there was nothing we could do to award the bids. So we had everything lined up as far as we could go legally. And then fortunately we were able to get the, the final step completed. So that also means to all the co community folks that we're going to be down the field for the summer, right? We'll yes. be torn up. That's correct. Yeah. Well, that, that area, yes, correct. for sure. Yeah. Are we anticipating a completion date at all for those? Uh, I, I, I can't give it to you off the top of my head. I'm um, assuming all goes as planned. Um, I actually, I, I think there was some increases in cost as compared to last year, but manageable and still where we need to be in terms of being under the, the budgeted number. Unfortunately, the, the land required no remediation, which certainly helped matters. But uh, the exact time frame, we're going to do it in as uh, quick a time frame as possible, making sure the job gets done right. And this will include, obviously, you know, some drainage and conduits, et cetera, that have to go along with it. So. Thank you. Okay. All right, so that brings us to our second public commentary. I won't repeat the rules. If anyone would like to come up, say anything, 
if you're not sure of the rules, I can let you know. But you have three minutes and really any topic other than personnel or something related to a student. Okay, I see nobody right. Oh, did you wanna come up? Just come up to, just, I'm sorry, just come up. So please identify yourself and your affiliation as long as you're a district resident or a staff or a faculty member. And please sign on the form that Mr. Stein just presented. So I'm Brandon Roth. I'm a resident and taxpayer in Huntington. Uh, I had a question about the turf field. Is that appropriate? That's a question. You can ask yeah. the question. If it's simple, we can answer. Yeah, so are we using the same contractor as before? Is it gonna be the same turf as the football field? I don't believe the bid was awarded to the same contractor we've used before, but this has all been vetted through our architectural firm and it is going to align with the field that's currently in place. Okay, so we're using different turf on the field? I mean, that doesn't... Well, it's not different turf on the field. And then that, that, I don't want to frame this as a conversation, but you can see the the bid award and all the specs that go with it on the on the item on the on the agenda tonight. Okay, am I, am I allowed to ask why? That that's not the question for this evening, but you're welcome to call the business office tomorrow, and they can. It when we go to, I, I will explain it to you. When we go to bid, we are obligated to accept the lowest responsible bid, so there is a legal obligation to accepting a bid that results in a process like this. Okay, because, because it's a public bid. Okay, I'm just curious, like, if you turf half your front lawn and it worked for the past 10 years, why wouldn't you re-turf it with the same turf? Why would we get different turf for the other half of the lawn? It you're, just doesn't you're, make sense. I, I believe you're making assumptions right now, and I will encourage you to call our business office tomorrow, and they can give you any specific. They'll give you lots more need. details than we can right here. Okay. Right. Thank That's, you. Yeah. At the district, at the central office. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak? Okay, any final comments by board members? Then I'll take a motion to adjourn. JJ, Michelle, all in favor? That's everyone, thank you.